Hey guys, so I thought it would be fun today to show you guys how I come up with an illustration. Um, while I was at summer camp this summer, I was working with my kids on um, making illustrations from prompts. So I thought it would be fun to, to kind of do a little video on how um, I do that. So I used Jazz's Arty Games and I used an environment prompt. The prompt was a boxing ring full of wildlife and features a large hook. So the first thing I did was make um, a list here of some of the wildlife that I thought would be really cute in the illustration. I did a tiny thumbnail. I usually do more, but I was kind of pressed for time. I was trying to hurry before the kids were done for the week, but obviously I didn't get it done, but that's okay. That's why there's YouTube. So as you can see, these are my first ideas. I thought of a bison. I thought some penguins. Um, these are those really cute loon birds that are, I think are going extinct. But um, anyway, and this is a tiger. So this is, of course, I did quickly without reference. And then once I started looking at reference, um, you could see where I started really developing the characters. They got a little bit better. Um, so what I did after that was, and this is kind of, um, this is kind of fun. So I actually took my designs, I scanned them into the computer, and then I I resized them and put them together and I kind of gave myself a perspective for the boxing ring. And then uh, I drew in a little quick thing of a large hook. So that way I was able to um, really kind of figure out spacing. Um, I tend to try to draw things and I struggle sometimes with creating um, the, the right size and proportion for everything all in one sitting. So that's why I tend to um, enjoy scanning my stuff before you know, putting together the whole illustration, I kind of do it like that. Um, so then this was the next one that I actually drew on. So I printed it out like I showed you and then I, I drew in the ring and I started drawing some of the other animals. I wanted to put a loon in there kind of as the ref. I thought he'd be kind of funny. So he's kind of swinging by on the hook. That way it utilized the hook and the prompt as well. And then um, I just thought it would be kind of funny to kind of see some other animals, bears. There's a couple of bears there. Um, they're on the tiger side, obviously, who looks like he just got knocked out. I kind of wanted him to look like he was getting knocked off his feet a little bit. A little movement there is always a good thing. Um, got a lemur on this side. And then what I did was um, I wanted to draw a couple more. And actually, even to practice the brown bears, um, I did some doodles of bears to try to like get an idea of how I wanted to draw them. And you know, this is again, it's just sketches. It's nothing like crazy serious. Um, and then I actually decided, okay, I want to draw a couple more lemurs. But again, it was one of those things where I didn't want to fit in such a tiny space. So I took to my sketchbook to draw a couple of ideas that I thought would be kind of funny there. So then I scanned those in. I scanned this new drawing, which was on top of the original scan, right? And then now I'm putting in, I put in these little guys, I'm drawing in some background stuff that's happening that'll probably be more silhouetted. And then um, I wanna put a couple little funny posters down here. As you guys, if you know me pretty well, you know that I really enjoy lettering. So I thought, obviously I'd have to put some of my lettering into this in some way. Um, so the next step of what I'm gonna do is once I get the drawing finished, I'm gonna actually transfer it onto a board. Um, and there's a couple ways to transfer drawings. Um, I wanna use this special watercolor board or it's made for paint, it's really nice, it's an aqua board. Um, so I'm actually gonna show you how to transfer a drawing from your paper to here and make it very simple for you. Um, obviously, if this was a different kind of a medium, if it was just plain paper, what I would be doing is using a light box, putting my drawing underneath it and then maybe redrawing it on top. So, um, okay, give me a few minutes. I'll get this all together. I wanna to finish doing my sketch and then I will show you how to put it on the board. Hang tight. Okay, so now I'm back. Um, I have finished doing my little doodles I wanted to do down here, getting all my little um, posters on there. You know, I like to have little fun things, like I said, with writing and I'll probably make these a little fancier when I actually go in there and paint it. Um, so most likely, um, if you don't already know about transfer paper, this is a wonderful little thing, um, but it does come in four different colors. I tend to use the graphite color. I use white a lot, and I also have um, red, which um, comes in handy as well. When I do, sometimes if I'm transferring something to a chalkboard that I've painted black, I will definitely use white. Um, the graphite or the red in this scenario would be perfect for this board. Um, what I'll probably do too is I'm gonna spray this with a clear coat or um, an, a crystal clear. It's, uh, I'll actually show it to you. It's uh, um, something special for uh, 
basically clear coating your project so you can build up layers. When I do crayon work, I tend to use it between layers so that my colors don't get muddy because I use wax oil crayons and after a while it does tend to build up and you can't really do much else. So you spray it on there, it's like having a fresh start. So, okay, I'm going to transfer this on, but first I wanna show you. So I scanned this in and I printed out a lighter version of what I have there so I don't have to draw on this one. I'm gonna actually use this to um, transfer to the paper. Now, if you don't have this um, kind of paper at home and you wanna do something that's a little more, um, I want to say cheap, but just cost effective, you know, if you can't get transfer paper, that's fine. Um, you can take a graphite pencil and you can just kind of on the back, you know, just scrape, 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 scrape until you basically get your covered in graphite. I tend to use something like um, a 2B or something that's a little bit of a softer lead so that it will actually like move very easily. Uh, the harder leads tend to be a little lighter. I want to be able to actually see it when it's on the board, but I mean, hey, whatever works for you, works for you. A regular number two pencil will work just fine as well. Um, so I can either use the white or the graphite. I'll probably use the graphite. Um, I will do a time lapse so you can see how I do it. We'll speed it up and then um, once it goes on the board, I'll start to explain what I do next. Okay, so hang tight. So here is my sketch that I have drawn on and transferred da -da, onto the board. I used the graphite because I like, uh, I don't know, I just felt like it was kind of light. The red sometimes makes me a little nervous. Plus, I do tend to do a little bit of a wash when I start my process of how I paint. Um, and I'll explain that in a minute. And I just didn't want the color. I use um, burnt sienna. Huh? I used that color and I didn't want it to kind of conflict with the red or make it hard to see. So it was just easier to use the graphite. And again, it's kind of light. It keeps um, everything kind of loose. Like you can kind of tell even in the, the tiger's stripes, I didn't get super detailed. You know, the lemur tails are kind of in there, but like you can just see where I left it kind of looser because I don't want it to be so tight and then I'm not excited about painting it or I feel like it has to be perfect. Like if it's a little looser, I give myself a little more freedom. Um, so now that it's on the board, I take Crystal Clear by Krylon, and uh, it's an acrylic coating, like it says, and I just spray it on top to protect the paint so that the graphite doesn't kind of move around. It can do that sometimes. I don't know a lot of people who do this. I mean, I'm sure people do it. I just kind of figured it out over time. Um, so anyway, um, what I'm gonna do next is, and I'll probably do a time lapse of it because it might take me a little bit to actually get all the paint on there, but um, I use, like I was saying, um, I use burnt sienna, it's one of my favorite tonal colors, and I'll paint a wash on top of this whole thing so that it kind of acts like like a tone underneath it. Maybe um, I can leave some of it popping through. I do have a couple paintings where um, I do like to leave like the underpainting showing through, but this also kind of makes it not so scary to start because white can be really frightening. Um, and you can do a tonal painting on top of this and that basically would be layering the burnt sienna um, washes so that I can kind of figure out where my darks are. And, and I'll show you, what I'll do is, I'll do the tonal painting first, um, I'll probably time lapse it like I said and then um, I'll explain a little bit and then I'll go on to start the finish. Um, so hang tight and we'll get going. 
So what I realized as I was doing this was that I was going to have to make two videos because this is already kind of like hitting 11 minutes and I thought well, that's kind of long. I mean, there's a lot of process to show you. So um, I'm going to break this up. This is going to be part one. Um, here's where I turned the light off by accident. I thought, oh, I'll, I don't like the, you know, the shadows this is casting. And then I realized, oh, that's actually awful and you can't really see. So I turned the light back on. Sorry. Um, I'm still very new to editing and filming and all this stuff. So um, I figured maybe um, the more I do it, the better I'm going to get. So just bear with me in the process. And um, ah, ha, ha, bear. I'm painting a bear. Did you, did you see that? <laughs> um, anyway, I hope that um, you've enjoyed the process so far. I look forward to painting this piece. And um, maybe if it comes out good enough, I'll actually offer prints for it. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I'm definitely going to make prints for my summer campers. I know some of them really wanted it. So um, with that being said, I guess I will probably see you in the next video, hopefully. I hope you enjoyed it. And um yeah, so look forward to the color. I'll be doing it in acrylic. So if you're interested in learning how I use acrylic, that's uh, that'll be a fun video for you. So stay tuned. And um, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.